Hello, listeners. Thank you for tuning in to the Jimmy Curve. Thank you for listening. I am your host, Jimmy Putnam. With me are my co-hosts, Will Doherty. I went first this time. And Joshua Vossler. Hello, everybody. And me, Jimmy Putnam. I did it again. I went twice. So thank you for listening. <laughs> Thanks for downloading, everybody. That was a piece of music from the band Sexophone. And it is so far my favorite piece of intro music we've ever had. I want to use it all the time. I thought that was great. Uh, and as Will pointed out off the air, it had some 8-bit stank to it, I believe is the term you used. I did, and I did it endearingly. So, uh, thank you to Sexophone. Check them out wherever you can. I'll put a full, a full track from them at the end of the show so you can check them out. Uh, thanks a lot for listening, everybody. We've got a good show for you today. We've got, we've got a great show for you today. I undersold it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, we're gonna do some. Look, uh, let's let, let's just let's just do the show and let them decide how good it was for themselves. No, I'm going to tell them <laughs> because I'm not confident. Otherwise, uh, I'm going to try and force it. Anyways, uh, later on we're gonna have Joshua Vossler read us some news stories. We're gonna do some topical commentary, uh, and then at the end of the show we're gonna do a segment where we make fun of our friend Corey Brewer's Facebook status updates. Uh, and make him answer for his crimes. Uh, some of us have some live shows coming up that I'm going to plug right now. It's your <laughs> plug. This is going to drop uh, on Thursday, December 4th. So that night, Thursday night at 8 o'clock, I will be performing at Backline Improv Theater, which is at 1618 Harney in Omaha, with my improv team, Words with Friends with Benefits, at 8 o'clock p.m. Then at 9 o'clock p.m., you can catch myself and Joshua Vossler... <laughs> slow, who is slow clapping for himself? <laughs> Sarkay is sarcastically clapping for himself. We will be performing at uh, the Doom Room, yay, uh, at the Sydney <laughs> at, at nine o'clock, uh, out in Benson. So come check that out, uh, and you can watch Josh mock himself on stage. <laughs> Uh, Tuesday, December 9th, I'll be performing just normal stand-up comedy, hopefully good stand-up comedy, on the Missing Kitten Comedy Show, which is at the Pizza Shop Collective. No, go ahead. I mean, let's let them listen to the comedy and decide for themselves how good it's going to be. <laughs> Will, that is the path to failure. <laughs> Never let the people decide for themselves. Have you learned nothing from politics? Yes, every good politician will tell you, you tell the people what's good. They'll listen. That's true. I had to do that at the open mic at, at Duff <laughs> when I was hosting Duffy's. I just had to browbeat the audience, like just convince them to be happy and have more fun. And how did that go? Pretty well. <laughs> they did. Sometimes stand-up audiences need to be told that it's okay to laugh. People come in skeptical for some reason. I don't know why. But uh, maybe our guest today can tell us. Let's introduce our guest with us. We have today... All the way from the great city of Lincoln, Nebraska, to join us, Drew Bulky, everybody. Drew Bulky. Yeah. Drew Bulky. Drew Bulky. <laughs> I want to say it three times so I had more than Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, go ahead and plug yourself. Uh, do you have, what, sh what shows do you have coming up? What do you got going on? Uh, I got a couple coming up. Um, this Sunday, which I'm not very good with dates. Uh, let's see if I can find it here. Lean into that mic. This is uh, on December 7th, this coming Sunday. Uh, we have a show at the Zoo Bar that starts at 8.30. Um, That's the Zoolarius show, hosted by Brad Stewart and Grant Parsons. That it's is a cool correct. show. Uh, Barry Rothbart's going to be there. Uh, he's been on Conan, uh, Craig Ferguson, Jay Leno, and he was also just in Wiffle Wall Street, so looking forward to doing Sweet. some work with him. Yeah, so. man, that'll be a good show. Uh, and then uh, moving to Los Angeles in a month, uh, we got a going away show at Vega on Thursday, December 18th. Cool. Where uh, you'll hear some jokes, and uh, me and Grant Parsons are going to auction off uh, people to spank us on stage and a lot of weird stuff. So oh. if, you, if you got time on Thursday, come on down, and you can <laughs> physically hurt both of us. I, that, I am going to... I'm going to win every auction. <laughs> <laughs> For $2. That'll be fun. That'll be uh, the highest bid. Now, the Jimmy Curve listening audience travels extremely well, so if you have any shows in L.A. you want to plug, my audience <laughs> will travel out to those shows to see you. <laughs> Perfect. That's exactly what I'm looking for. So, so 
Uh, once you're out in Los Angeles and you're super famous, you know, keep sending us emails. We'll plug your shows and we'll we'll fill up. I I I promise you. I'm guaranteeing you. I will personally be responsible for filling every show that you do in Los Angeles forever. Well, you know, I couldn't ask for anything more than that. So <laughs> we're, I'm going to be begging you to come back and do this podcast probably after a month. So. Oh, I'm assuming that I'll have uh, a major radio show by that time, or I'll be on television probably doing The Tonight Show, or... Well, you got a face for radio, though. I was <laughs> 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 just kidding. <laughs> probably a self-titled series on IFC. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I feel like I hurt your feelings. I didn't mean to hurt your <laughs> no, feelings. No, no, no. Uh, oh. You just beat me to it, is oh, okay. all. Uh, uh, if you hadn't said it, I... Whatever. I, I I was sarcastic when I was telling <laughs> telling you all of the great things that I would be accomplishing. Just don't the... fire me from the show. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a job. Can you be fired from something that's not a job? Yes. <laughs> Can you be fired as a volunteer? <laughs> well, I'm not going to fire you. Thank you. I don't. Even though this is called the Jimmy Curve and it's my show and we're in my house. Because of my self-esteem, I don't see myself as having that kind of pull around here <laughs> that I can just willy-nilly fire somebody. Yeah, I try to carry myself like I'm running shit around here. <laughs> you should try it on the air sometime and see how it goes. <laughs> Firing Josh? Yeah. That sounds like a lot of fun. Let's let's you I know, know what? I know it's coming. Let's do though. this. Let's let's play a little game. Let's let's see how it would go if I were to fire Josh for his performance on the air. And for this little uh, improv, Drew, I need you to play like the heavy. So you're going to be like my second in command who's, who's just there to reinforce my decisions because I am weak even though I'm in charge. You got it? Will, you are the golden child of this podcast. You, you can right, be... but who do I play? <laughs> just be yourself. <laughs> got it. All right. Joshua Vossler, uh, step into my office. I guess you're wondering why I've called you in here. Why don't you step into his office? I assume you, it's Drew. for a raise. Drew? Not a raise. Not a raise? No. I feel like I've really been uh, contributing a lot to the show lately. Joshua, we need to talk about your performance. Uh, and for comparison, I made this chart of Will Doherty's performance. Now, as you can see, you can almost see your bar if we use this comically large magnifying glass. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I apologize for laughing at you, Joshua. That's it's completely unfair of me as your boss. And it was completely unfair of me to be so hilarious at this serious time. You don't need to apologize to someone when you're firing him, Jimmy. Oh, I'm getting fired. And oh, that is correct. I I'm sorry. Again, no, I'm not sorry. I'm getting confused here. I am not. <laughs> you already <I'm>, feel bad. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I feel a little bad. I'm stepping out of care and scene. <laughs> I couldn't do it. I, Guys, couldn't, I couldn't look uh, you in the eyes and pretend to fire you. <laughs> nor could I look Will in the eye and compliment him. <laughs> oh, I was great, though, wasn't I? <laughs> and as you can tell by my really intimidating voice, I was a great muscle during you that were, firing. Was, so. Drew, you were the best part of that one. <laughs> Oh, Drew was man. smiling at me, but it wasn't like we're joking around <laughs> smile. It's like you're fucked. It was like, no, smile. you're seriously fucking fired. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Boom, nailed it. <laughs> so let's let's move on. Oh, I wanted to do a segment uh, called "Let's Get Some Medical U Updates" because we have a couple of things to cover from our guest and from uh, one of our co-hosts. Let's, let's get, get some, some medical, medical updates. updates. Ba -dum -bum. Boom. <laughs> uh, on last week's show, Will Doherty, you took a bizarre pill of some sort that possibly contained some chemicals or some medicine or something that affected your penis. Um, Let's it, get an update. It affected my penis least of all. Uh, what I uh, just... For for those of you who are just catching up, uh, our guests last week were kind enough to present us with a gift. Yes. Of a uh, Dan Schmidt and Chris Dryden, the finest gas station boner pills. Correct. Uh, Black Panther. Black Mamba. Black Mamba penis enhancement. Uh, and it and it did no such thing. Which which will immediately swallowed. <laughs> and, he, and he thought it was food. <laughs> <laughs> 
here's the thing. I have a history of drugs not having any effect on me. Also, you don't care about your body. Well, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go to McDonald's as soon as we're done recording this. Right. The part the, 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 the one... fact that that might have been harmful to your body was the least interesting part to you, I feel like. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I I assumed it was just going to be like pl- a plastic capsule wrapped with like sawdust on the inside. Right. Uh, and I was wrong. <laughs> what happened? Um. Well, uh, I don't know if you've ever done ecstasy before. No. It wasn't like that. Okay. Um. But it, what it did have in common with uh, other people's experience on ecstasy uh, was that there were significant light tracers in my vision. Really? I don't know if you know what that experience is like, but like any time, like I had to drive home and... Uh, Headlights were about three feet long. So it had like a hallucinogenic effect on you? Well, it's not properly hallucinogenic. Like it just affects the way like it just creates like a stall when you're seeing um, like light just hits the back of your eye and stays there for a half second. No wow. wonder boner pills are so popular. It's like taking <laughs> acid. Is what it sounds like. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Uh, coincidentally, uh, this is not an effect I got when I took ecstasy, <laughs> right. but it's something I've heard enough people talking about. This is a, the people are going to go buy these pills now. To oh get no! This effect. Don't do it. <laughs> I it was. I mean, you got to see light tracers, but you didn't get any of the uh, euphoria. So what's the point? Right. Uh, what I did get was a dull headache that lasted for three days. Do you, do you think it was from that pill? Yes. I know for a fact it was from that pill because it started about a half an hour after I took that pill. The the biggest lettering on the packages was no No headaches. (laughs) It's almost like they knew it was an issue. (laughs) It did did say no headaches and huge words. That's funny. Any other side effects that you noticed? I mean, uh, so there's a dull headache, and li- how did the light tracers last for three days? No, the light tracers were gone within a couple of hours. And, and how are you feeling today? Um, a week later. I mean, terrible. So my baseline. <laughs> so back to normal. Right. I can't tell. Like, I assume that the light tracers must have something to do with like it having some, be, actually being like a vasodilator in some capacity. Uh. Like, I assume that's how it affected my eyeballs. Right. But uh, my... Uh, oh, I, I, no. Oh, oh no. perception. <laughs> <laughs> I worked in a Joey drop. <laughs> um, but uh, my, my, my boner was, uh, was uh, unimpressed. Sadly unaffected. There was no penis effect whatsoever with like, that. Literally, I went home that night, and I feel like there was a chance I might have had sex if I hadn't said, like, not now. I really have a headache. You didn't even get, like, a tingling sensation down there, like, when you're going to school in kindergarten, your mom's taking you there, and you, like, drive over a hill, and your penis tingles, or, like, when you're taking off on an airplane. And it yeah, did gets things that. get warmer? Yeah. Not that I noticed, <laughs> but I'm pretty sweaty all the time, so it might have happened. I don't know. Uh, we need to also get a medical update on our guest, Drew Bulky, who two weeks ago, I think, got hit by a car. I did. That's right. Uh, Tell us that story. Yeah, we got done with the show at the zoo bar, and uh, it was cold outside, so I was running down the streets with my hands in my pockets. I was crossing what I thought was 12th Street at the time and P, and uh I, I just got smoked by a car right on my left side. I saw the headlights come in, turned to the left. Next thing I knew, I hit my head on the windshield. And uh, nothing. So this was a full on, this wasn't like uh, bumped and no damage done. Like you got whacked no, by a car. No, I definitely got whacked pretty good. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the next thing I knew, I was standing up in front of the car. And uh, these two dudes, not being stereotypical, but they happen to be Asian, asked me. <laughs> They asked me if I got if I was fine. I was like, yeah, I think I'm fine. I mean, I'm standing up, and they just sped off immediately. And so I walked down to uh, the tavern, one of my other favorite bars, and order another drink. You know, doing the responsible thing after you get hit by a right, car, right? Of course, <laughs> yeah. And uh, I see some of you guys there, and I, yeah, I got hit hit by a car that night, and 
and there's a police officer that happened to be in the tavern and he asked if he wanted if he, if I wanted to have him call it in and I was like no no I'm drunk and he kept being like that doesn't matter you got hit by a car and you were you didn't do right. anything wrong right but I was so paranoid about it so now I could have been twenty thousand dollars richer or something like that but they were poor. Asian and they were Asian and they're yep they were Are you saying you're Asian no I, I'm saying they were Asian they <laughs> I I don't know where I was sorry I wasn't implying. <laughs> They have. They were Asian. They have money. Yeah, is that one of the accepted stereotypes about Asian people? Yeah, I, it is now. <laughs> I'm making it one. Uh, so, did you? Ha- any, did you have any residual effects? Did you wake up the next day and you were just sore? Or definitely had a headache. Uh, my entire left leg was was pretty numb when I was falling asleep that night. Definitely sore when I got up in the morning. Now, what? Like, just if you had to take a guess. I mean, you, I obviously you were kind of drunk, but like. What would you estimate was the speed of the car when it hit you? Well, the speed limit is 25, so I'm going to assume they were a really good driver and weren't going over that. I don't know, probably like 10 or 15. Like right. I said, last thing I remember, hitting my head on the windshield, but I didn't crack the windshield or anything. Maybe I was just drunk and he like barely <laughs> tapped me and I just like fell over. <laughs> well, there is this, I have no idea. There is this weird phenomena where I've read stories before about people who, when they're drunk, like, are better at surviving impact because it relaxes your body and you don't tense up. Like there, there have been stories of that. Ha- am, I, am I the only one who's heard? No, of I've no. Definitely, definitely heard that. So I don't know. That could have been. So if you guys are going to walk out into the street in front of cars, be drunk. I mean, I guess yeah. that's the, you know, so one of the best things about being out an alcoholic, I guess, is you can get hit <laughs> by a car and you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the worst ones is that you have to pee every Kids. 10 seconds, so you're like worried about dribbling in your boxers every 10 <laughs> minutes. It's awful. But. Yeah, the last thing you want is to have urine-soaked trousers as a corpse. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> I get hit by a car and laying dead on the street, and I just have urine-soaked pants. It would just be an <laughs> awful scene for my parents to find me at. But. Yeah, or 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 just unconscious would still be kind of bad. Or totally conscious at the, at the next bar. Losing control of your bladder always bad. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I, I, I got hit by a friend's car one time when I was like in high school, but it was one of those where the brakes were on and they were screeching. And so by the time it hit me, I kind of flipped up onto the hood and rolled off, but like it didn't, the car didn't really hit me and I was 16 and sober. So, but it was scary as hell. So, uh, it certainly spiked my adrenaline, but no, I, this situation, I mean, you're, I guess you're lucky. Very lucky. Yeah. Um, well, when I worked at Detox, way this is when I graduated high school. I worked at Detox in in Lincoln, and I worked a Halloween night. And they brought in this guy in a in a, like a a cop like a sheriff's uniform. And he, I guess there was another guy with him, and they were supposed to be the two dudes from Chips. Okay. But he got <laughs> brought in, and his buddy got hit by a car. But they were d- in the intersection downtown trying to direct traffic. <laughs> <laughs> so they also got impersonating officers uh charges too. Okay, so these guys were <laughs> they were they were just this is like a Halloween thing. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and they were out in the street directing traffic. Yeah. And then some and a car was just like, "Nope, one of them got hit." <laughs> when the other one went to detox. I feel like that's what I would do. I feel like if I like if I had any awareness that like these were clearly idiots on Halloween trying to, like, I feel like I would just mow one of them down. <laughs> like, full in the knowledge that I would not be held responsible for that at all. Uh, I did. I, I'm I'm possibly doing a show uh, this Friday night at Backline. It's a storyteller show. And the story I was going to tell is about the time where I intentionally hit a pedestrian with my car in front of a cop. And the cop arrested the guy I hit and let me go. Uh, and assen- so, should how I tell that, that story work? now? Yeah, <laughs> let's hear how that worked. So, okay, well, this was like a couple of years ago or a year and a half ago or something. My cousin got married. So the whole family was invited to the wedding, and it was in uh, the old market in Omaha. So we were all staying in a hotel down there. And uh, even though I live just an hour away in Lincoln, like we had a hotel room because we were in the wedding party. So... We all just went down to the upstream, and we were there. We closed it down. We were there till two in the morning. Um, or was, by that point, it was just me and my sister. And so when we left the upstream at two in the morning, I believe that I could have passed a breathalyzer test, but I was certainly towing the line 
But I, I was only going to drive three blocks back to our hotel. Well, the old market on a Saturday night at 2.05 in the morning is a fucking zoo. There's just people everywhere. So I was at a red light. It turns green. And as it turns green, this big group of people walk out. And they cross the street in front of me. And I get mad. And so I, <clears throat> I honk the horn. Well, people in Omaha, I, this, was, this is the one thing I wasn't really processing at the time. No one in Nebraska honks their car horn. That's a very rare occurrence in this state. And when I honked at these pedestrians, which by the way, I had a green light and they were just and they were they were very slowly almost deliberately crossing the street in front of me I felt at the time. So I honk and they one of them like freaks out and he does the bro move where he turns and like flexes at me and starts walking <laughs> starts walking towards my car. And then I gave him a big honk this time. And this one was an aggressive mean honk. And he, and he starts yelling at me and flexing at me again, and so I, I hit him. I just, <laughs> I just, I pull, I Basic pull, instincts Like, there. not fast, but I was just like, yeah, you're a big dude, but I'm in a car. So, <laughs> I, I mean, I hit him at five miles an hour, and he jumped up onto the hood and started punching the hood of my car, which is why the hood of my Kia Spectra has dents all over it. You can, like, see it. <laughs> so, so I... I shut off the engine and I jump out of the car. I'm gonna fight this guy, right? And I was just like, "I'm gonna get him." Uh, my sister, by the way, is an attorney, and she's in the passenger seat, losing her mind. She's like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> and I was like, "I got this." So as soon as I get out of the car, the other thing about the hay market or the old market at 2:05 in the morning on a Saturday, there's a cop on every corner. So there's a guy standing there, usually on a horse too. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was a squad car, and they watched the whole thing, and they flip on the lights, and I hear, Bruh! you know, so I back off, and as the officer comes over, he's like, what are you doing? And I kind of gave the whole, oh, I'm really sorry, officer. I, I lost my mind. He, this guy was, you know, threatening me and attacking me. I'm sorry. It's my fault, blah, 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 blah. Then he goes and talks to that guy, and that guy gets belligerent. He's like, Fuck you! Why are you fucking talking to me? This is bullshit. I didn't do fucking shit. So they they cuff that guy and run his license, and he comes back because he's getting belligerent. And by the way, he's got a bunch of friends who are like yelling at the cops too. And I'm just kind of stand there like, if I knew the proper level to bow to, I would have done that. You know, I don't know. <laughs> so he comes back and he he gives me you know he gives me the the field test, the field sobriety test. I pass. And he's like, okay, you're fine. Uh, and they ran that guy's license, and he had a warrant. So they arrested him. And the the guy's buddies were, you know, at this point, I'm kind of like winking at his friends and stuff. And like, <laughs> I'm, feeling, <laughs> I'm feeling pretty good about myself. Couple and he, thumbs up. And he's like, uh, since the guy damaged your vehicle, I mean, you can press charges. And I was like, no, I just want to go home. He's like, where are you going? And I told him the hotel we were staying at. He's like, okay, so... Anyway, the conclusion of the story is I wake up the next morning. I have I don't have my license, my registration, or my insurance. I forgot to get it back from the cop. So I'm calling I – call, I call the police, and I tell them what happened. And the whoever I talked to was like, why did you leave? And I was like, uh, the guy told me I could go. And he's like, but you didn't get your license back. He wouldn't have released you. Did you flee the scene of a, of a, of a crime? And I was like – I don't know. I don't think so. But I, but, I just, <laughs> but I just hung up, and I was like, Mary, I don't know where my, my license is, like, and I don't want to try and get it. <laughs> I'll just get a new one. <laughs> so then I get a call from my cousin, whose name is also Putnam, is Spencer Putnam, and he, all of the rooms were in his name. Well, the cop came by the hotel and left my shit for him. So, like, he ca he did me a solid like after all of that like he brought my license and registration and left it with my cousin, so I got a call from him like an hour later saying, "What did you do last night? A policeman came by and <laughs> gave me your license." <laughs> I was like, "It's a long story, man." You couldn't have made it out any better with that though. It was awesome. The greatest part, <laughs> the craziest part is we've discussed on earlier shows how sometimes. I have just absolutely no self-esteem, and other times I have just a weird degree of confidence. And this was one of those times where, as I was getting out of the car, looking at the cop, my sister was like, we're going to jail. 
But I, I was 100% sure I could talk my way out of it. I was like, no way. I got this. No way. Because in my mind, I was like, what's he going to arrest us for? There was a guy standing in the middle of the street. Like, you can't just stand in the middle of the street. That's where cars go. So in my mind, I, I, I was just full of righteous indignation. <laughs> like I was working for the cause. So See, that's think if you would have had uh think if you would have had that mindset when you were firing jo- firing Josh earlier. Oh, see. <laughs> you would have had so much confidence in that. <laughs> would have gone over smoothly. It would have been great. It would have been great, but I couldn't do it. I couldn't look into Josh's big puppy dog eyes and <laughs> Well, you know me. You didn't know this asshole. <laughs> oh, man. I was I was going to fight him too. I was see. like this it's on. But I I didn't realize that he had like, like three buddies with him. So I probably, if there was no cops, I would have gotten the shit kicked out of me. So you're right. Like it was a weird serendipity. Everything, everything came out. I came smelling like roses. Yeah. What I, what I would have done differently uh, besides everything, obviously, <laughs> but like hearing you tell that story, I really would have pressed charges. Like I, I, I know yeah. it wouldn't have been worth the time and effort, but like, I don't like myself, and I'm willing to hurt myself to hurt other people. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, it was it was more just that it was at this point it was two twenty in the morning, and I was really tired, and like I had been drinking, and I was like, I don't want to be in a police station right now. Right. No good can come of that. Any further action is me taking risks I don't need to take. Exactly, and. I probably could have gotten my car fixed, but it's it's not that big of a deal. Like I, I it, it really, I mean, it's not that much. Like I don't care what my car looks like. <laughs> did did you at least like? I would have at least wanted to find out like what that guy's name was, like find out what information I could, so that I could just go taunt him later. <laughs> <laughs> just like I just yeah. want to go, I just want to be able to find out his name, look it up on Google, find out his address, and then just like go stand outside of his house for a while, <laughs> just like making monkey noises or something. Right. Well, what happened was, as I was climbing out of the car to fight this guy, my adrenaline was so high, and that's where that crazy confidence came from. That when I started talking to the cop, I was still on an adrenaline rush, and I was still like, I'm. I'm un- I'm invincible. Were you on one of those boner pills, Wilton? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I had my my libido was at an all time high. <laughs> yeah, but here's the thing, like, but it- but but what happened was when I came down from the adrenaline high, it totally wore off. And as I was standing there watching them cut this guy, that's when it started to wash over me. Where I was like, oh my god, you just got so lucky. You need to get out of here. Like, don't take any other risk. Just go home. Well, but here's the thing, though. Like, he had more adrenaline than you. If you right. would have been carrying that much adrenaline, you would have been the one who was getting into the argument with the cop. Right, or right. Punching right. the hood of a car. <laughs> right. 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 I think the thing about that story that bothers me the most, though, is that I got hit by a car and could have pressed charges and gotten money, and you hit someone with your car and didn't press charges and could have got money. <laughs> right. We both got fucked there. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Yeah. So... Hey, uh, let's talk about California. Drew, you are moving to California uh, the day after Christmas? A couple days. Uh, leave it on the 28th that morning. To pursue a career in comedy. That is the goal. G- give, me a, give me a brief outline of your plan. All right, we're going to take off in the morning. Uh, we were going to go through Colorado, but uh, I don't really want to drive through snow, and I'm just assuming there's going to be a bunch of that. Don't, don't hold the... <laughs> there you go. It, it it rattles through the. You got it. Uh, so we're gonna drive down through Albuquerque. Uh, stay with our buddy Derek Sloan, who's done some comedy in Lincoln for a couple years. He moved down there a few years ago. Uh, and then we're gonna spend New Year's in Vegas. So that should be that should be a little wild. Mm-hmm. Uh, get up to, get up to California on the second. Uh, we'll be doing stand up. Uh, there's a magazine called Stand Up Mag that I'll be writing for. Um, and then also, how'd you get that gig? Uh, one of, one of Grant's buddies actually, uh, helped start it. And so he's going to, I think it's going to be like a paid per article type thing. We should say Grant Parsons, Grant Parsons is going with yeah. you. Uh, he's coming with me. Uh, so we're going to be doing that. Uh, and I've also been writing a, uh, webisode or TV series for about three or four months now. I got the pilot done and a couple other episodes. Nice. Um, 
And uh, we got a meeting set up with funnierdie.com on the 4th or 5th. So well, hopefully awesome. we can make something happen with that. We're kind of playing it by ear right now, but we'll see. That is cool, man. That's a that's a much more solid plan than than honestly I imagined that you would have. Right, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like I know you and Grant, and I kind of I kind of figured the plan would be like Just fucking wing it. We're going to go out there, spark up a joint. Well, I mean, that's definitely going to be part of the plan for Hit sure. Hit a couple but. of open mics and Bob's your uncle. Like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we, we have one solid plan set, and if that fails, then we'll just be back to uh, smoking joints and doing some open mics. So yeah. That's cool. No, that's good, man. That's going to be fun. Like, How much do you know about the L.A. comedy scene? Uh, not a whole lot, actually. I mean, I've gone out there a few times. I've got uh, my aunt and uncle live out there. Um, so I've been out there to visit quite a bit. Wait, are um, they are they the swingers? They are they are the swingers. Okay, let's yeah. talk about this. This is what I want to talk about. You told me the other day that you have an aunt and uncle who are active swingers, and I said that's one of those things to me, like using a phone booth that just seems like doesn't happen anymore. Like I or that I only see in movies. Like I only see swinging in movies, and I I always think, duh, that's that's bullshit. But no, it's this is a real thing. Uh, see, that was that was the same reaction all thirty three people in my family had when they told us that over a Thanksgiving meal. <laughs> keep awesome. keep in mind, half my family's Christian, so they were thrown back big time by right. that news. But yeah, they uh, they've been married for thirty five years. Uh, they were hippies back in the day. Traveled around in a van, followed concerts around. Uh, and they, I think they started off like doing the let's switch couples tonight type of a sex thing. Right. And now it kind of turned into, they don't live with each other, but they still vacation together. They have sex still, but they also fuck other people. I'm not really quite familiar with right. how that whole scene works, but she has some really interesting stories. Does Jan so, Aunt Jackie. So, so <laughs> it's, it's less of like a committed couple who are swingers and more of just people who have are living in the commune of America. Right, yeah. You know, and she's she's like when she brought it up, you know, uh my my <laughs> my uncle Gary was like, "Are you like how can you be happy with that?" And she's like, "Well, I've heard how awful some of your Christian marriages are, and we've been <laughs> just fine for 35 years, so I think we're doing it right." But Do they do they get along with each other? <laughs> they do. Yeah, they love each other. They uh like I said, they, but they still, don't live together. They don't live together. No. That's why they get along so well. Exa you know, exactly. <laughs> That's when you learn to hate people is when you start living with them. Like I I had a I had an ex-girlfriend and one of the things that drove me the most crazy was every time I would go into her bathroom to take a shower, there would be like wads of hair stuck to the side of the shower, you know, because it's like clogging the drain. Yeah, I'm familiar with this phenomenon. Yeah, and I never fully understood that until I started growing my hair out, and I did it the other day, and then I was so disappointed in myself that I fucking did that. I literally like grabbed it off and like threw it against the wall in the bathroom and hit the mirror. I was like, can't ever do that. Oh, man. <laughs> That's that was one of our biggest arguments. Will, you seemed confused when I was like, that doesn't seem like a thing that really happens. I, I, I thought it seemed like, it seems like we're moving towards a period of more like, you know, like just as a Sexual society. Freedom. Yeah. I mean, aren't we? Just like collectively? Yeah, but this is a, sp I, I would agree in general, but this is more of a specific type of relationship than it is about sexual freedom. This is, the, the idea of an, of an open, sexual, committed relationship is impossible for me to wrap my mind around. I mean, it's it's hard for anyone to understand anything that they themselves can't picture themselves doing. Sure. I guess that's part of it. And so, like, I can't imagine me being involved with that and being okay with it. So it's it's hard for me. And I've never known anybody who has said we have an open relationship and then it's lasted. Like, I've known people who have claimed to have an open relationship, and then within a year they had no relationship. That's very common. Like, that happens a lot. Sure. Because people fool themselves into thinking, like, yeah, this is a mutual thing. We both love each other. We just want to fuck other people. And within six months you realize, no, we just want to fuck other people. It has nothing to do with... Like, like I'm imagining, I'm imagining, like, my Aunt Jackie coming home to Greg and being like... Uh, so, uh, last night, you know, we were drinking some wine and I, I fucked Dan, our neighbor and he like high fives are all excited and stuff. Like, I don't know if they like how so, they support this or like how that happens. But. Yeah. See, that's <laughs> so bizarre to me. I just see, I don't know. Uh, I, I'm, but here's the thing. I'm really glad to know what happens, I guess. Uh, it, it makes me happy that that is something that some people could now. I don't want to get you in trouble in case they may listen to this at some point, but okay. 
whenever I hear open relationship or swinging, I think mm, those people aren't very attractive. <laughs> <laughs> kind of uh, like a nudist well, colony. Like yeah, perfect. like you're never going <laughs> to see a model on a nude beach. Yeah, like you go to. Yeah, you're always disappointed when you, when you when you go to those things. I went. I went right. to. A, I was in Steamboat Springs, Colorado, and there was this place called Strawberry Park, and it was a hot springs. And on Wednesday night, after 10 p.m. from 10 p.m. to midnight, it was nude swimming. And mm -hmm. so, of course, me being a horny 21 year old was like, <laughs> absolutely, I'm going to go to that. Yeah. Yeah. And I was just like Will when he took his boner pill. I couldn't get up for shit looking at everything <laughs> that I was looking at. It was awful. So you yeah. plan on you plan on living no, with? They're they're sixty years old right now, so they're oh. they're still going strong. So even if they were attractive back in the day, it's not looking so much right now. <laughs> so you're like, moving in with them? I'm not moving in with them. No, I'll you be gonna be hanging out. We'll with be, them. I'll be hanging out with them a little bit. Yeah, she and you, Jackie knows how to party. Do you so. plan on learning the craft? Are they are they gonna <laughs> teach you how? As long as long as neither of them are involved, I'd be down to experiment just a little bit. Probably. Right, like you're open to experimentation. If you have any questions, you have somebody to go exactly. to. Exactly. You know, I have. You know, I can go to. If I have any questions, she's gonna. They're gonna be able to Season give me the veterans. best advice. Right. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. they are like, no, no, no. Do this. This will work a lot. Pass better. down some knowledge. Are they are they, are they into like key parties? Is that a thing that they would do? That's another thing that I've only seen in movies. See, I, I'm on for a, a key party. A key party is uh, a very specific kind of swingers party wherein individual couples each, uh, you know, bring their keys. You drop them in the bowl, and then it's a it's a you know n name out of the hat. It's thing. like all the men drop their car keys into a bowl, and then the women go and pick a pair of keys out of the bowl, and that's who you go home with. Will, how many times have you done this? That sounds like something you you know a little too much about. I am very unattractive. <laughs> <laughs> Well, like I said, it's a thing I've seen in like that '70s show, right? right? Yeah. And do I, they do those? Is that still I, a thing? I don't. I don't know. I don't. I, 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 don't I don't really believe it was ever a real thing. It's been a real thing. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not speaking from experience. As you know, if you've ever listened to my comedy, the most common like premise of my comedy is that I've only had sex with one person. Mm. But. Um, like I don't my my here's my suspicion about like the key party as it relates to like open relationships. Open relationships are open, but they're still relationships. Like it's not just like we're gonna fuck anybody. Like pull the name out of the hat and see what happens. Like there's still decision making. You have involved. to get like approval from the spouse still type yeah. of thing. Yeah. All right. Maybe uh, think of something <laughs> which is not really related, but sort of. Like, they have these auctions where you can auction off people. You ever see this? Where, like... <laughs> like You're talking a, about slavery. No, no, no. Like, <laughs> to lose the brown audience. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, you... It's like, a, you know, the money goes to charity or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Date auctions. Date auctions. And then the guy has to come home and, like, clean your fridge or... Well, I don't know, like... What you a, know, there's... Clean your fridge. You know, a really hot chick or whatever. And she goes for a lot of money because guys are really attracted to her. Now, do they put? I think they put a crazy amount of money. Do they expect to get laid? You think they might, but generally at those things, they are very clear that it doesn't have to be. But I mean, is it like, you know, wink, wink, nudge, nudge? Again, I'm gonna say this is like the nude beach. You're never gonna get to <laughs> bid on Eva Longoria at those things. Like you, you're you're bidding on Uncle Susan. And I feel like it would be a lot more popular if those people were you were able to bid on them. Yeah, it would. <laughs> Eva Longoria would go for a lot of money, but uh, you know, and it's for charity. You know, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's a good cause. Yeah, I can think of nothing more awkward than us talking about this. Oh, all right, sorry. <laughs> no, I'm not, not blaming you, Josh. We need to talk about your performance. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Drew here is holding up a chart of your performance on the Jimmy Curve. Oh, that's pretty good. Oh, wait, it's upside down. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, let me flip oh. that around real quick. I'm sorry. Let me give me a second so I can go grab my comically oversized magnifying glass. <laughs> <laughs> Josh? Yes. <I'm laughs> you can't do it. Yes. You're weak. <laughs> You might be able to destroy me physically, but all I have to do is look at you with sad eyes. I'm so ashamed get, of myself. Go out in the garage, get in your car, and then fire me. <laughs> <laughs> 
can do. Let's do a news story. Joshua. 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 Bossler. News. Hello, everybody. Sold to the biggest nerd. <laughs> <laughs> what some have called the worst video game ever may ever made has fetched thousands of dollars for a New Mexico city. Uh, it's the old E.T. extraterrestrial Atari game. Oh, yeah. Nice. Uh, for the original Nintendo? No, uh, Atari. That would be the Atari, Atari 2600, uh, Atari Jimmy. 2600, right. Basically, uh, there, there's always been this legend since the early 80s that a bunch of Atari video games were uh, thrown away and were in some dump. Right, we're buried in some dump. Um, Will, where were they? Uh, they were in New Mexico. Right, <laughs> right. Well, uh, somebody wanted to some some people that wanted to film a documentary about this put up the money and they dug the video games out. Over eight hundred Atari video games, and uh, so far they've auctioned off a hundred of the games. Uh, since Thursday, and they've generated thirty-seven thousand dollars. These are games that games. W- these are games that like w- were not available anywhere, <clears throat> like could not be found. Or well, some of the games include Centipede, Warlords, oh, okay. Asteroids, and uh, one of the ET games sold to a Canadian buyer on eBay for one thousand five hundred thirty-seven dollars. <laughs> wow. I've I've heard that that ET game was is was the worst video game ever made. Um, well, if you'd like me to explain it for the next 10, 15 minutes. Yes. <laughs> uh, the E.T. video game uh, is, like, w- one of the singular forces responsible for, like, the giant video game crash that happened, like, to Atari and all the other small, like, video game companies that existed before, like, Nintendo came back in and saved the entire industry. Really? Yeah. Um, it was a licensed game made by Atari wherein they spent... All of their money on getting the uh, E.T. license, they had no money left to develop an actual video game. They paid one guy who had like a month's worth of time, I believe. Like one dude, I think 30 days before the movie came out so that they could get like a, you know, simultaneous release. And he crapped out a pile of shit, which is what he could do. (laughs) Right. Uh... And they they spent so much money that it fucking ruined Atari, and by extension, the video game industry in America. If you were wondering why Will has only had sex with one person, <laughs> the last 30 seconds explains that very well. <laughs> Will is the all-time high score holder in E.T. <laughs> the video game. It's almost bad uh, as Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure game on regular Nintendo. That game was awful. I... Yeah, I've never played either one of those, but uh, I, I'm having a hard... Like, that E.T. game came out at the time of, like, Pitfall and Pong and shit. Like, tanks were, you know, Atari yes. games. Like, how how could it be so bad? All of those games were kind of bad. I mean, video games weren't much back then. Right. Now, I mean, I understand what you're saying, but you have to remember, that's the standard it was failing to live up to. (laughs) Right, right. Yeah. The dig itself cost $50,000, which was put up by the guys doing the documentary. But all the Atari games that are dug up are owned by the city, over 800 of them. And so they're selling them off on eBay, and all the proceeds are going to some historical society. So these these games were literally buried in a literal dump. Yes. So yeah, that uh, goes what's back. The, what's that legend? Like he said that. So the the oh god, you got me, you, <laughs> you fucker. This this video game uh, that like legendarily ruined and in the entire industry. They ma- they manufactured millions of copies, anticipating it was going to be this huge seller for them. Right. It was garbage, and it sold nothing. So all the stores returned them. They they sold barely anything, and all the stores returned them. So they had these excess millions of copies. That was the legend. Why that was why there was a legend that like yeah they just took all these millions of copies of E. T. and just buried them in the new. Uh, New Mexico desert. <laughs> uh, but the game itself, eventually... Where, where the actual aliens are. <laughs> right. Yeah. 
Yeah, they're in uh, the. There are two point five million copies of ET for twenty six hundred in Area fifty one. Yeah, buried under Area fifty one. Nice. Um, but the, yeah, that's how it Area could, fifty one. A good video game, by the way. Um, I mean, it was okay if you had a couple of quarters and five minutes to waste. I did a Ooh. lot. <laughs> <laughs> that happened to me a lot. Friction. <laughs> <laughs> Will, you're fired. Honestly, I, I, <laughs> I mean... Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Drew. Area 50 wood was shallow even as far as light gun shooters go. <laughs> to, to, uh, honestly, I didn't remember anything other than that it existed. I don't remember if it was good or not. I I was, I was I took a shot and missed. Sometimes <laughs> sometimes that happens with commentary. Uh, all right, you got one more quick one? If you want. Let's do a quick one. All right. Uh, well, actually, I'd like to talk for another 15 minutes about the history of Atari. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you got a staring problem? (laughs) Pizza Hut has developed... (laughs) Pizza Hut has developed a new tablet-based menu that uh, relies purely on a customer's eye movement to create their perfect pizza. Well, like, fucking it reads your mind? (laughs) Yes. Eye movement? (laughs) Yes. Uh, Huh? The subconscious menu, which is being tested, first syncs the eyes, uh, the customer's eyes movement to a like floating Pizza Hut logo to track your eyes. Then the screen shows all these images of popular ingredients. Well, within 2.5 seconds, the menu reveals the customer's perfect pizza based on the ingredients that your eyes stare at the longest. What if they're blind? You're <laughs> then this is discriminating. Blind people don't get pizza. Blind people don't like pizza. Is that what their Pizza Hut's trying to promote? <laughs> if you're blind, get let's, out. Let's be honest. What it doesn't really blind? matter how many blind people are there. I mean, <laughs> Pepsi's gonna be okay. As a Pizza Hut delivery driver, several who order Pizza Hut pizza regularly. Oh well, there you oh, go. All right, <laughs> we have the inside scoop, and there you have it, folks. Pizza Hut hates blind people. <laughs> you heard it here first on the Jimmy Curve. Pizza Hut is claiming that there's 4,896 possible combinations and that uh, this method is 98% successful. Nice. Yeah. That's all. Wow. <laughs> I mean, how, ca- it. <laughs> how do you quantify that statement? Like, if it'll just spit out a pizza and, yeah. like... If it if you go like yeah that's exactly what I like like great but if you go like that's not what I like it's like well maybe you should try it well you, you can just go in really stoned and then they'll throw on every topping that they have and it'll be perfect <laughs> yeah like that's the other thing is that there are specific pizzas I like but there are lots of pizzas that I'm okay with so if it just get you know I mean there are very few pizza toppings where I'm like I won't eat that shit. Like, I won't eat a pizza with mushrooms on it, but basically if there are no mushrooms or black olives, I'll be like, yeah, that that's the pizza I like. But Well, the thing <laughs> is, too, you might be craving something different than you normally do, and it'll it'll be able to tell that. So, you, And it takes 2.6 seconds, so if it says, okay, this is what we think you want, you just click reset, 2.6 seconds later, gives you something right. else. Right, and here's, yeah. Oh, go ahead. here's my feeling about this. If this technology was real and it actually existed... We wouldn't be using it to sell pizza toppings. Like, we would be using that to just, like, streamline the sex industry. Right. Or something where there's real money. Mm -hmm. I will look into more stories that (laughs) could be happening. (laughs) A lot of artificial intelligence going on there. Yeah, I mean, damn it, unfortunately, I'm going to have to spend all night tonight Googling sex industry eye movement. (laughs) (laughs) So, thanks a lot, Doherty. My aunt and uncle will pop up on yours, I'm sure. (laughs) Uh, You fucked us again, Will. All right, that was it for the news. Let's, uh, we're going to do a segment now, uh, where we talk to our friend Corey Brewer and we read his Facebook status updates to him and we make him defend himself and answer for his Facebook crimes. And now, Corey Brewer defends his Facebook updates! Welcome to the Jimmy Curve, Corey Brewer. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you for having me on. Hey. All right. So, now, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Corey Brewer's Facebook page has been an object of ridicule and derision. 
uh, that has cost him most of his friends. Uh, <laughs> when I've mentioned this segment to people, there have been one of two reactions, either that's hilarious. I hate Corey Brewer. Or <laughs> or no one's going to want to listen to that. I hate Corey Brewer. <laughs> oh. So in this segment, oh. we will read Corey Brewer's Facebook post the to truth him. The finally comes out. Yeah, so. and ask him to explain himself. Joshua Vossler, what do you got? February 3rd, 2010. Jesus. Yes. That's so uh, long ago. Tiger Woods, when 18 holds isn't enough. <laughs> Smiley face. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Before we go any further on that one, that was a complete hack joke. I saw that in a meme. Okay, so that was you just... You have to respect my honesty. What, what, I did what, not come up with that. Sorry, we're off to a good start. 2010? Yeah. <laughs> you went through you four went through. Ye- or five, basically. I, I sat there and... You just clicked on 2010. You didn't scroll the time down I, until I, you got to 2010. By the time I got to the last post I looked at, I'm like... Oh, yeah, I hate Corey Brewer now. <laughs> I've had my fill of oh, Corey yeah. Brewer. Oh, by the way, if you're wondering who Corey Brewer is, I'm a janitor who farts a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All That's right. the drop I was waiting for. Will, what do you got? Oh, uh, Well, since I'm not so well prepared, mine is from Saturday <laughs> at 2.22 p.m. It's more like <clears> it. <throat> and now, my weekly installment of Corey ruins a romantic moment. <laughs> uh, I, okay, I, I really like this one. This is one of my favorites. <clears throat> this is this is a bit of a story. <laughs> Don and I were showering together, and the following conversation took place. Don standing under the water nozzle. I love this, babe. I love how comfortable we are with each other. I love you, babe. Creepy. Me. <laughs> I love you too, hon. Can we switch spots so I can piss down the drain? <laughs> <laughs> this concludes Corey Ruins a Romantic Moment. <laughs> See you next week. <laughs> well, in my defense, that happens like every other day, but I just try to pick the best ones. You piss, you move someone out of the way so you can piss in the shower every yeah. other day? Yes, I and thought... that's the beauty of my girlfriend is that most girls would be disgusted that you even piss in the shower she let me do it while she was in there with me yeah, you're and that's gr- okay. why i love her your girlfriend is disgusting that's the yeah. wrong answer <laughs> hey, well, piss is okay. like 95 percent water first of all it's not that gross here's the thing here's the thing i'm not saying i've never pissed in the shower you just keep it on the dl guilty yeah. absolutely yeah. but like I would never do it if there was another person there. I don't piss in a toilet when there's another person there. It's <laughs> yeah. weird to me. Right. She was out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> and when I asked her, she and goes, yeah, sure. And she, just, <laughs> she moved out of the way and she watched me piss. And not, she was also massaging my back <laughs> while I did it. I feel like that's... <laughs> She's the best. <laughs> She's the best. N- no, that's... Uh, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm saying that <laughs> sounds to me like she's easing her way into some R. Kelly shit. It's, it sounds to me like the reason why we did this segment. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> my, my, my favorite Corey Brewer ruins a, mem- mom- a romantic moment must have come a week before that when it was like, laying in bed, Dawn had her head on my shoulder, and she said, I can't, I'm paraphrasing, she said, oh, babe, I love this. I love how I can hear your heartbeat, to which Corey Brewer replied, I hear that if you punch a man between heartbeats, you can seize his heart, <laughs> killing him instantly. <laughs> something to that the effect. The best part about this, I whispered it to her <laughs> in a romantic way. Like, Let, I let's hear what that would sound like. Hold on. Uh, okay, will, uh, will you play the part of Don? Okay. <laughs> That's not a whisper. But well, he's Wait, what am I supposed to be saying? <laughs> I heard that if you hear a heartbeat, what happens? <laughs> no, 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 no. You just you say I love hearing the sound of your heartbeat. No, okay. no, 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 no. Can I can I get it right? Just say I love <laughs> laying on your chest. Your heartbeat puts me to sleep. But whisper it. Oh, Corey, <laughs> <laughs> I love laying on your chest. The sound of your heartbeat puts me to sleep. I hear that if you punch a man in the chest in between heartbeats, you could seize up his heart, killing him instantly. <laughs> oh, Corey, make love to me. Actually, at that point, she went, oh, I'm going to go What's your face doing? Is that a facial tick? 
<laughs> one of my favorite Abby. Okay. Random Abby drop. <laughs> All right, Josh, what do you got? All right. Oh, Jesus. Uh, I got July 23rd, 2010. Attention, psycho bitch who insulted me at work. <laughs> <laughs> You're not gonna catch the plague just because I touched the edge of the of your precious drink cup. Mm, I remember. Fuck this. you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Where, where were you working at this time? Arby's, uh, the South Point <laughs> Food Court. <laughs> South Point Food Court. All right. Yeah. And uh, she ordered a meal with a, a combo meal with the drink, and I gave her a cup. But when I grabbed it, I, my finger touched the edge of the cup. Yeah, you should never do that. Yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> uh, but when I slid it to her, she, like, hucked it back at me, like, violently. <laughs> and she goes, she hucks it back, and it, like, kind of, like, slides up, like, flies up in the air against my chest. Like, very upset. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and she's like, she's like, I am a manager at Wendy's. You don't do that. <laughs> And it was like, all right, whatever. And she's like, don't you know anything? You're a manager. This is ridiculous. And it was fucking very upsetting. Worked your way all the way up to Arby's manager, did you? Yes. <laughs> and then I became homeless almost. <laughs> yeah, it right. was very upsetting at the time. I couldn't let that go for like a week. <laughs> I can't believe it. I actually wa I walked away. Like I felt like I was supposed to respond to that. But I just, I like, I just walked away without saying anything. And I went up to my general manager uh, and I was like, you go take care of this because I'm going to flip my shit. I couldn't <laughs> handle it. I'm like, yeah, I was wrong, but that's a horrible way to handle it. You know, <laughs> it's ridiculous. All right, Will, what do you Next. got? Next. Mm -hmm. What do you got? Thursday at 1.09 a.m. Oh, my God. I'll bet Jesus was a shitty carpenter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, uh, did you see some of his work? What happened there? <laughs> uh, No. I was just laying in bed, and my mind went into weird Corey mode, and that's just what I thought. And I just, put it on there. Just really laying no in bed, about thinking about Jesus, <laughs> <laughs> as thinking one about, does. Thinking about how he probably insulted the cross that he was on. How he many was like you call these dowels? How many likes did that one have? I don't remember. Ahem. Will one like? <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Let me try and guess. Was it was it Russell? Uh, it was someone I do not know named Joe M. P. Oh, yep. Okay. <laughs> I know who that is. <laughs> I'm not I'm not proud of this, but I went all the way back to 2008. Dude, no, I wasn't even remotely funny back then. What? And and the thing is is like you did a weird thing. Like <laughs> It says Corey Brewer up on top September September 27th, 2008, and then you refer to yourself relative, like into the third person cuz you just put is thinking the Huskers aren't used to seeing that kind of speed. Is thinking the Broncos going, is that... Was that I remember that. That, like, when Facebook first started, that was a thing. Oh, okay. Because, like, when you would... It would, like, have that, like, as the basis of all your statuses. It would put your name as if you're using your name to begin a sentence. Okay. Oh. That was how, like, us old-timers who were on Facebook back when it was still only at universities... I'm glad you said that because I was so confused. Because like, I know you didn't I know... No, I don't remember. We're talking about your Facebook post. I, I so saw long it, ago. and I was just like, well, that's he's kind of being a dickhead referring to himself <laughs> as a third person, but apparently everybody did Does that. Does he not know he's Corey? <laughs> Does that, no, I don't remember that, which was really confusing yeah, me. Yeah, that was a thing. I'm surprised they didn't, uh, I don't know, was that not in that uh, weird Zuckerberg <laughs> <What>? biopic? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember that. I got September 29th, 2010, uh. and on the eighth day... Satan created Kansas. <laughs> oh. Yep. What Is happened? That it? To, what happened? That's it. <laughs> that was a short one. <laughs> what happened to you in uh, Kansas on that day? My Corey? friend Dusty and I went on a month-long road trip where we went, did, basically did a giant counterclockwise loop of the west half of the United States, like up into you know South Dakota and right. Montana and all that. We came back down the California coast. On the way back, we went east into Texas, and then at the end of our trip was we went straight north through Kansas. So we drive, drove south to north through Kansas. And that's when I posted that while driving. And the great thing about that actually is like when we were driving through Kansas, I had my feet out the window. I was clipping my toenails while driving. <laughs> <laughs> that was the thing that we did. And I just remember thinking that because the only thing we were doing is my friend Dusty was using a wooden slingshot that he found in California and he was flinging rocks at cows. And that was all we did. Uh. And it was like Kansas is fucking horrible. I thought Nebraska You were was the bad. worst thing in Kansas at that point. <laughs> Yeah, probably. You were driving through Kansas, clipping your toenails out of windows, shooting slingshot rocks at cows. No, my friend was doing that. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yes. 
All right. That's where that came from. This concludes the first edition of Corey <laughs> Brewer defends his Facebook oh, status. Oh, it looked like updates. Will had a good one. <laughs> oh, 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 you'll be back. Oh, man. Join us again in three weeks or two weeks or <laughs> maybe an hour for <laughs> Corey Brewer defends his oh. Facebook status. <laughs> Thank you very much, Corey Brewer, and thank you all for listening to another episode. Uh, thanks to our very special guest, Drew Bulky. You can catch him. Oh, wait, you're this Thursday, aren't you at uh, the uh, Brewskies? I am also at Brewskies this Thursday, yep. So catch Drew at 8 o'clock uh, hosting the comedy hour before the dueling piano. Who else is going to be there? Richard Reese? Richard Reese, and then uh, Grant Parsons will be there, and then, of course, Brad Stewart, who puts it on. Fantastic. Come out and check that out. It's a great show. Uh, so enjoy that. And then uh they're going away party at vega on the 18th and what else we have and then uh the zoo bar this sunday right. zoo at bar sunday at 8 30 uh catch drew doing some stand-up comedy before he leaves us to go become famous in california uh and catch me at backline in omaha uh, tonight, Thursday night at eight o'clock, and then Josh and I at Doom Room on Friday or uh, Thursday at nine o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> this is not what I wanted it to turn into. <laughs> this is the opposite Too of bad. that. <laughs> uh, I don't know. We plugged everything at the beginning of the show. <laughs> Tuesday, Pizza Shop, Missing Kitten. Uh, thank you everybody for listening to the show. Here's another little tune by Sexophone. Thank you and good night. Endless evenings of non exist are getting close to monotonous. Like an intruder, I'm alone. Back the same place I was before Saying things I'd say once more There's no reason for me to be here now I feel so lonesome surrounded by friends Who were talking about me saying things I could care less about This dialogue is without